minus 60 seconds and counting. Who is your best friend? Who can you come home to and know everything is going to be all right? Who is the one that will always follow you no matter where you might end up? That's right. It's your animal. It's your best friend, your closest companion, your partner till the end. But have you ever wanted to know more? What do they do when you're gone? Why do they do what they do? Or even think about other animals around the world. What do they do? How do they act? Why can't I have one of those? Well, sit back, hold tight, because here we go. Welcome to Animals, Breed All About It. It's a show open from anything from A to Z. It's all about the animals. So, what do you want to know? Where shall we go? Follow us as we dive deep into the animal kingdom. Hello, and welcome to Animals, Breed All About It. It's a show about anything and everything from A to Z about animals, whether it's the small critters in your backyard or the large and in-charge animals living around the world. On today's episode, we ask ourselves, are we ready to have a pet? Then we swing by Almost Home Animal Rescue League in Haven to meet the adoptable pets of the week. After that, we take a stroll with paws around Motown and end our episode up at the Detroit Zoo to meet an animal that weighs as much as your car. Can you guess which one? It's all coming up on this episode of Animals. Thinking about bringing a new pet home but not sure where to start? Asking yourself, what pet is right for me? Is there a breed that fits my lifestyle better than another? Pet adoption is a big decision with a lot of questions to think about, but if you follow these tips, it can help you to start to come up with some of those answers to your initial questions that will lead you down the right path to find your forever pet. We caught up with Matt Pepper, President and CEO of the Michigan Humane Society, at the last Meet Your Best Friend at the Zoo Day for some advice. Well, the first thing you want to do is talk it over with your family. Make it a family decision. Make sure it's a, a permanent decision. And if you've, if you've had that discussion and you're ready to add an animal, you know, just make sure you're, you're talking to the, the, the professionals who are, who are kind of facilitating the adoption to make sure the behavior, the, the, the health requirements for that animal meet, meet what you're willing to provide. And uh, if they are, now's the time. Now's the time to add a new member to your family. A couple of other things you might want to think about when looking to adopt a pet are, how much time can I devote to my new pet? Will I be taking them on walks every day? Will I have to leave them at home most of the time? The amount of activity depends on your breed. Shepherd and Retrievers are some of the dog breeds that require the most activity. Basset Hounds, Bulldogs, and Greyhounds require the least. Think about where might I be in life in five to 10 years? Do I plan on having kids? Is my career gonna be changing? The average cost of a baby in the first year is around $12,000, according to the USDA. Can I afford this new pet? How much will food cost each week? Average monthly food costs can range between $20 and $100, depending on the brand of your food and the weight of your dog. If you are not sure what you should be feeding your dog or have any questions on what their diets could be, a great local place to answer all of your questions is Southfield's very own Premier Pets. With this super knowledgeable and friendly staff, they are there to advise any pet owner new or old. They also have great weekly deals that can help anyone on a budget. How much will vet bills be? Spaying or neutering, about 200 bucks. First round of vaccines slash shots, $150. Routine tests, between $50 or $300. All costs are based on averages. Will I have to take them to daycare while I'm gone during the day? Daycare averages $25 a day, but some places offer package deals that lower the daily cost if you buy in bulk. Or you can look into dog walking services that come to your house. Paws Around Motown is a local dog walking service that will come to take your pet out for a walk, let them out to go to the bathroom, or stay overnight if you plan on leaving town. 
Are you going on any trips in the near future? If so, do I have people to watch them? Boarding costs can range from about $25 to $45 a day. How do you see this pet fitting into your everyday lifestyle? Do you plan on taking them with you when you run errands? If not, what are they going to do? How does their day look? Certain breeds require more stimulation or they can become destructive and disobedient. What kind of training do you plan on doing with your pet, if any? Some classes start as low as $50 or local pet stores offer courses that span over weeks. Do I have other animals? If so, how will this affect them? Also, where do I look to adopt? What's the difference between a shelter animal and a pet store animal? There's so many animals in shelters and people assume that somehow they're broken or there's something wrong with them. Couldn't be farther from the truth. These are perfect animals just looking for the right opportunity. You know, we, we often think of them as wrong place, wrong time. As shelters, we think of them as right place, right time. And with the help of the community, we can absolutely make that a reality. Always think adopt first, whether it's from the Michigan Humane Society or your local shelter. Adopt first and make sure it's a permanent decision, well thought out decision. And if, it, and if you have issues, organizations like the Michigan Humane Society are here to help you through those issues. And once you feel you're ready to adopt, there are tons of shelters with animals ready to come home. And be sure to mark your calendars for Friday, September 15th and Saturday, September 16th for the next Meet Your Best Friend at the Zoo Day, where there are tons of shelters that come together for an adoption extravaganza. And they help to provide education and advice on the process. A pet is a lifelong commitment, so make sure that you're ready to be their forever home. Now, let's meet some of this week's Almost Home Adoptable Pets. Are you ready to bring one home? Hi, I'm Marla from Almost Home, and here I have Callie with me. She's just such a sweet kitty cat. She is a one person cat, so she would do best with a single person and to be the only cat in the household. But she's beautiful, she's a calico, which is why we named her Callie, and she's just waiting patiently to find her forever home. This is Conrad, he's super affectionate, will be great with kids and other animals, other kitties, and he'll make the perfect kitty cat for you. This sweet boy is Garth. He is our last black kitten here at Almost Home. He would be great for a family with kids and other animals. Halloween is around the corner and black cats make the best pets. If you're looking for that forever kitty to just warm your bed at night, Garth is your boy. Over here we have Jazzy. Jazzy just wanted all of our attention so we had to put her on next. She is the most affectionate little tiger striped kitten. She is so friendly and as you can see she's purring away. She would be the perfect family addition to your home. And she's just patiently waiting to be in a bed and cozy up next to you. If you're interested in Jazzy or any other animals here at Almost Home, visit us today at www.almosthomeanimals.org. Trivia! A crash is a group of what type of animal? Stick around for the answer. Paws Around Motown is a, a dog walking and pet sitting company. Um, we really cater our care to the animals that we take care of. 
Um, we have, uh, we take care of primarily dogs and cats, but we're really not opposed to taking care of any animal. We just might need some instruction if we don't have a lot of experience with them. Um, but we're, we take care of primarily dogs and cats and guinea pigs and fish. I started by volunteering for animal rescues. I used to walk dogs during um, adoption events on my days off from work and I loved taking care of them so much. You become so bonded with those pets that I thought, how can I do this all the time short of going back to school for 10 years and becoming a veterinarian? So I started working for some other companies that do you know, these types of things and decided that I really love meeting new people and meeting new animals so much that I really just wanted to start a company of my own. We have about 200 customers. Uh, we care for probably about 250 dogs and I'd say 40 cats. Um, and we have, there are 12 of us in total that provide pet care and that includes myself. We do um, uh, what is called a pet taxi. So we'll drop your pets off and pick them up at the groomer. Some dogs go to daycare. We have dogs that we pick up from daycare and take them home and take them for a walk. Um, we do yard waste cleanup services, um, so some of those are weekly, some are bi-weekly, but we'll come pick up your yard for you. We do uh, vacation visit packages, so some dogs don't necessarily need someone to stay the night with them. Uh, and so some dogs will go in and, and visit them maybe three or four times a day so that they can stay on their regular feeding and medication schedules and whatnot. And then we do our dog walking and we also do cat sitting, so we scoop the litter and feed them. We started in the, in the Berkeley, Birmingham, and Royal Oak area, but we have extended our region just in kind of going out in circles. We now cover the whole Woodward Corridor. So we cover from Detroit down through Waterford, and then we cover um, Farmington, Wald Lake, West Bloomfield, Rochester. We've been out to Rochester for some pet sitting, Clinton Township. We do a, what's called the free initial in-home consultation. So we'll come meet you, come meet your pets. We basically walk the home where all the pets um, things are, what are their routines, uh, does, are they fearful of anything, uh, what do they really like, uh, uh, what do they eat, how often, are they on medication. We cover all that during that consultation. Myself as the owner and my assistant, Megan, we go to every consultation. So we actually meet every pet that's in the care of the company. And we're kind of the first and last line of defense for any emergencies that might come up. But we like to feel very integrated into the family with those pets. And so we know every pet in our care. And then we'll typically take one to two walkers with us on the consultation so that the pet parents can actually meet who's going to be taking care of their pets. It's a little bit of a healthier um, environment. You're not around other dogs. You don't have as much risk for disease and parasites and things like that. Also, um, the, the risk is minimal as far as <clears throat> um, like dog-to-dog -dog interactions. You don't really have too much worry about fights and stuff like that. Um, and it's just, it's, a lot of people do it because their dogs are either maybe not dog friendly or just that they work really long days. The average walk is about 30 minutes. Um, we do offer 45 minute walks and 60 minute walks as well. We arrive at the home um, and we utilize a pet sitting software, so we GPS check in. Uh, we go in and again, we, you know, we meet the pet, whether it's in a crate or you know, in the house, and we take them out for their walk. Um, then we document what, the, what we did on our walk, where we went, and kind of um, stuff we saw, and then um, you know, if the dogs went potty, and then we GPS check out, upload a picture, and um, so type our message. And that's pretty much it. We are um, a bonded and insured company, so that makes a lot of people feel better when you know new people are coming into their homes. We request three copies of the key needed to gain entry into the home. Um, two of those keys are assigned to the primary and the secondary pet sitter, and then the third key is kept in a secure location for the management team so that we always have an emergency backup. Some people utilize garage codes and door codes and things like that, and so that helps in the event of an emergency uh, where, say, maybe there's a power outage and the garage door doesn't open, um, a key gets dropped down the sewer. I mean, stuff happens, uh, a car gets in an accident, you know, things like that. So we like to have that emergency key. Um, and then the, pri the, the primary and the secondary pet sitters will keep those secure with them as well. 
we're a largely mobile business. Um, I would love to have an office where we could do, maybe have some space to do some puppy socialization classes, um, a place where our team members can kind of meet and join up. And then I'm actually going to school uh, to become a certified dog obedience trainer. And so eventually, probably in about six months or so, we'll be offering a training service as well. So I would love to do something where I have training classes. We are a, a pet sitting company that started on the passion of taking care of animals. We love them, they're our life. Everybody that works here has had some kind of experience with some kind of pets um, or has worked in the industry. Um, and I think that it's important for people to know that when they're taken care of by us, they are truly going to be treated like they're part of our family. We call it our family. We treat them like they're our own, sometimes even better. I mean, I feel good knowing that my pups are at home with my husband, but those pups that have people on vacation, I might pop by and do an extra visit or stay a little longer or just give that pet whatever they need. Animal Trivia. A group of rhinos is called a crash. And now let's meet our very own crash, Jasari and Tamba at the Detroit Zoo. at the White Rhino Habitat. We have two amazing rhinos, Tamba and Jasiri. Tamba is 16, Jasiri is 17. They are big boys. You can kind of equate it to the size of a small car. They weigh right around 5,000 pounds and their weight fluctuates, but we have a wonderful facility inside and we're able to weigh them so we can keep track of that. In the summertime, we love to provide them with fresh browse that we have on grounds. We also provide that in the wintertime. Um, sometimes they just feel like eating more than not, but they get hay and pellets. And then a very special treat for them is actually alfalfa hay, and they love it. So we make sure that they get whatever they want, whenever they want, as the, uh, our vet staff prescribes for their diet. We, in 2005, had the pleasure of having Tamba and Jasiri come here. Jasiri came from Jacksonville and Tamba came from Knoxville Zoo to come and live with us. And we're very grateful to have them, they're amazing. We did have rhinos in the Detroit Zoo long ago in the past, and we also had them in a different location. We had a black rhino. Um, again, these are white rhinos, so, and Rudy, was our black rhino. He was actually the oldest black rhino known in captivity, and he was over 50 years old, so he had an incredible life here. We had elephants in this habitat before. The elephants went to a sanctuary, and that's out in California. It's the Performing Animal Welfare Sanctuary, and they traveled there to live out the rest of their lives in sunny California, sort of as a retirement and had many wonderful benefits of being with other elephants, a fantastic climate. There are five species of rhinos. Black rhinos and bright white rhinos are from Africa, and then there's greater one-horn, Java, and Sumatran that are from Asia. Rhinos are big and very powerful. So our two boys usually are in the 5,000 pound range, um, but I just depending on the individual. They can be larger or smaller. White rhinos specifically are one of the, are the largest of all the rhino species. 
You can find rhinos in the whites and the black rhinos in Africa, and the other species are in Asia. They will be in the savanna munching on grass, and one of the interesting characteristics about the white rhinos that we have here is they have a very flat lip, um, and that helps them to grab as they eat the grasses. Rhinos can live into their 50s. Uh, it really depends on what is happening to them in their environment. A rhino's horn is made out of the same thing that your nails are made out of, which is keratin. And it's just a very big version of it. They do have very small hair and they do have a rough textured skin, but you can feel their hair. And then one cool thing about our rhino Tamba here, that's a characteristic of how we identify him because he has cute little hairs across the top of his ears. The rhino's biggest threat is poaching. And unfortunately, they have that big, beautiful horn. And in some different cultures, they believe it may have medicinal purposes. So they are victims of poaching. Um, but that's something that many organizations are working on to try to remedy that and stop that within the different rhino species. Our rhinos here at the Detroit Zoo have all kinds of things in their day. We try to create a nice, complex choice environment for them so they can do many different things. They are typically fed in the morning and then we set up their outside yard with all different types of things for them to interact with, things to eat all over the yard and it's different every day. So they come out to something new and complex and then they usually go outside. Um, we like to make sure that, especially in the summertime, we fill up their wallows and they love to wallow in their giant mud pits and they'll check those out. And then at the end of the day, um, they'll come in and they'll have dinner and um, get checked throughout the evening. So we like to give the animals as much choice as we possibly can in their day and provide them with that. A group of rhinos is called a crash. Many males, when they're grown, are solitary and they'll come to meet a female when breeding. When mothers have calves, they will stay with them for maybe up to a year unless the mother is pregnant again. And then she may send the calf away. And that calf at that time may join another family group if found. White rhinos are near threatened. Um, a huge cause of that is poaching and many things are being done right now to stop that, but it's still a reality and it's happening daily almost. We work in cooperation with the AZA on many conservation efforts for rhinos. Um, it's very important to us that we stay up on that information so we can also um, share that with our public. There are so many fun facts about rhinos. Um, they're actually very playful. They like to bang things around. They will rub their horns on logs. As you can see, the many logs in the yard, they like to use their big wide lips and tear the bark off the big logs. They love to push them around. Um, one of my favorites is when they're wallowing and you can actually see all four feet in the air as they're enjoying covering their whole bodies in mud. And it, it's really neat because it also keeps the bugs off of them because it coats them with a nice little layer of a screening. When you come into the front entrance of the zoo, the fastest way to catch up with the rhinos would be to take the train all the way to the back of the zoo. Um, you can also walk to the northwest corner of the zoo, past no monkeys, past the lions, and you'll find the rhinos. And be sure to mark your calendars for these animal events and celebrations coming up.
Well, thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Animals. If you have anything you'd like to see, please feel free to swing by our Facebook page, Southfield Multimedia Services, and leave us a note. Until next time. Bye.